Inside Michigan Basketball is presented by Meyer. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Inside Michigan Basketball. The Wolverines lost another game last week due to COVID-19. Tuesday's tilt against Purdue postponed, but they did take a full contingent to Champaign, Illinois Friday for an evening tilt against the Illini. Now, keep in mind, Michigan hadn't played in 11 days, and it was only their third game in the previous 27 days. Like the dark winter sky, Michigan sporting a menacing look, the midnight blue uniforms. They played without Hunter Dickinson and Brandon Johns Jr., who made the trip but did not dress. Early on, Eli Brooks penetrates and dishes the Musa Diabate for the slam. A few minutes later, Devante Jones plays the passing lane, the grand transfer with the Euro step and the hoop, the Wolverines going toe to toe with the Big Ten leader. Illinois' Alfonso Plummer finds a comfy spot in the corner. He drills a three ball. The Illini would open up a nine point lead and looked on the verge. But the Wolverines with a spurt to close the half. Jones grabs the long rebound and takes it end to end. It's a three point game. Then watch the hustle by Jace Howard. He hits the deck, finds the open man, and it's Jones. Left wing for a three. You betcha! What a hustle play from Jace Howard, and Michigan's down two. Second half, Illinois goes right to its big man. Kofi Colburn plants himself in the post, the bucket, and the foul. The Wolverines push the pace after a long rebound. Jones with the dribble hop goes off glass with it, tied a season high with 17. Off the loose ball scramble, freshman Kobe Bufkin in attack mode. Right side, Bufkin, four on the timer, push shot, good. And it's a one-point game, 45-44, 7-24 left. But Colburn was the immovable force, the 285-pounder with 21 points and 10 boards. Trent Frazier scored 16 of his 18 in the second half, including 11 straight at one point. Despite a gallant effort, Michigan falls 68-53, dropping to 7-7, 1-3 in the Big Ten. This is the most energy that we played with, um, most passion. Um, we won a lot of the 50-50 balls. It's, um, that was big for us. Um, seeing people dive on the ground um, and that kind of stuff um, is going to win us games on the stretch. Effort is something that I feel like coach shouldn't have to ask for, and I feel like we bring that every night. Um, so I feel like our intensity level is very high today. We was very hungry, very gritty, especially on defense. Um, 94 feet, you know, we all just played our, played our hearts out. You know, shout out to, like I said, the whole team. You know, Jace came in, you no know, dough on the floor, you know, gave his body up. Um, you know, Frankie Collins came in, you no know, Kobe came in, everybody did their job. So that was, that was just a motive, you know, it was just being a dog 24-7. Each time Illinois looked like it would run and hide, the Wolverines found a spurt of their own to keep this one close most of the way. We always talk about staying the course. Um, we've had games where we didn't, and that was in the beginning of the season, so we wanted to make sure that tonight we kept battling no matter what, because they're going to go on runs. That's a very skilled team. It's a great atmosphere, and, and you just got to embrace it. You don't want to shy from it, run from it. You just want to embrace it, and once we did that, I feel like we were able to make sure we were able to keep ourselves in the game and gave ourselves a chance. The extra challenge for the Wolverines, they had only about a day and a half of full practice leading up to it. You gotta figure it out. We ain't got no time to, you know, cry about our situation. We just gotta go and do it. And also, you got outside noise, of course, that, that might try to affect you. But like I said, man, you play basketball and that's the, the game that you love. So you're gonna give everything you get. At times, Devante Jones almost single-handedly kept Michigan in the game finishing with a season-high 17 points and six boards. The coach got on me about you no know, last game, only taking three shots. They said I wasn't aggressive enough, even if it is scoring for me or just being aggressive. I mean, scoring, um, getting my teammates open. So um, I just wanted to be aggressive, no matter if I was scoring or getting them the ball. So that's just my mindset throughout those, for the rest of the season. Though a loss, with all that's going on recently, the guys are taking this as something to build on. To know that we're still through this adversity, keeping our our, our good energy with each other, it's, it, it shows that it's, the season isn't over. Um, it's just the start of it. It's four games in the Big Ten play. We got 16 left. We talked about that 10 minutes ago, and we're just going to keep on playing like that. We're going to keep on giving our all because we got it. We got a we got an opportunity ahead of us. Season isn't over. Um, there's been teams in the past that have done this and even more and, and been in a worse hole than we are. So we're just going to embrace it and 
come out on top and make sure that we give every day. Every day we give 100% effort. They always going to take and learn from uh, wins and losses, and you know. We never, it, the ones that get excited about more victories because they don't exist. But this is always a great teaching moment. And, and then with that, uh, it defines who you are when you face adversity. And like I said earlier, um, how we've handled adversity, uh, I'm in the trenches with this group because I commend them, I respect them, and I'm going to fight with them. There's much more to come on this week's show. We recognize 50 years of Title IX with women's coach Kim barnes Rico. Michigan hockey goes for its second consecutive sweep and later a conversation with former football star Mark Messner on his selection into the College Football Hall of Fame. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you in part by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. Welcome back to Inside Michigan Basketball. As part of our 50th anniversary of Title IX series running on MGoBlue.com, we turn our attention now to women's coach Kim barnes Rico, whose motto, Be the Hardest Working Team in America, is reflective of her own diligent climb up the career ladder. Barnes Rico's path to Michigan has been a long one. Before she could become the winningest coach in program history, she had plenty of steps to climb to get there. You know, I, I started actually from, you know, the ground up. I coached at every level, um, from high school to Division three to Division two to Division one. So I was at schools where you had to fundraise to um, get a pair of sneakers. And uh, when I say a pair of sneakers, you made it through the season with a pair of sneakers. And if you wanted a sweatshirt, you know, you had to ask your mom and dad for money for a sweatshirt or you had to fundraise um, for the sweatshirt. So um, when we went to games, we had to drive vans. We went in vans and the coaches had to drive vans. So I, I think my experiences um, have been, you know, from from grassroots, from the ground up. We get to sing the greatest fight song. KBA, as she is now widely known, has become the most successful coach in Michigan women's basketball history. U of M has made the postseason and every year there's been one, winning the WNIT in 2017 making four NCAA tourneys, including Michigan's first ever Sweet 16 a year ago. I think I've been very fortunate that people have given me opportunities. And every time I got one, I, I tried to work my butt off and just try to take advantage of it. But I think if you have a, a certain grind and a certain work ethic, you have to believe that good things are eventually gonna happen. Barnes Rico has had enough sustained success that she very much has her own coaching tree. She has embraced her role as a mentor to both her players and assistants. Take pride in what you do down that way. Find somebody early. The opportunity to impact a young female's life is incredible, and I have that. Um, and that's really important to me, and, and that's one of the greatest gifts that I can give as a coach. I feel like that's my responsibility as a coach. And my responsibility is to help future generations and give them a chance to achieve anything they want to achieve like people gave me. People gave me opportunities to help me get to where I wanted to be. Um, and I want to be the same for my assistant coaches and my players. I, I think that's so important that we show, and, and we talk about it at the circle every day, we are young, powerful women. Players in our program, young, powerful women. Get your shoulders back and you can be anything that you want to be. Because a lot of times women are told, you know, you have to choose. You have to choose between a family and a profession. Where men are, men are you know, you can have your profession and you can have your family. I, ha I feel like it's my responsibility to show my assistant coaches and to show my players, no, you can have, you can have both. 
You want to be president? You can be president. You want to be a professional basketball player? You can be a professional basketball player. You want to be athletic director at the University of Michigan? You can be athletic director at the University of Michigan. And nobody, I mean, people are going to tell you no. Believe me, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to tell you no or try to say that there, no, there's no way that you can achieve that. But I'm here to help them, to show them that, no, you can. You can achieve every, anything that you want to and just keep fighting and just keep clawing and have a greater belief. 25 plus years into her career, KBA is showing no signs of slowing down, still pushing for equality and opportunity for herself, her sport, and the young women in and around her program. Um, I'm so thankful for the people that came before that did that fought those fights and you know you listen to coach Hutch's story or you listen to so many other people the team won that started at the University of Michigan and all the things that they had to overcome to even be able to have a season and be able to compete and be able to have equal things um, that the men have um, but that fight is ongoing and that fight is never ending. I'm so thankful for the opportunities that I've had and the opportunity that I get to be here today. And I think that our student athletes today have um, great access and they have a lot of wonderful things. But I think, you know, we got to keep knocking down doors and we keep got we got to keep breaking barriers and you know it, it's a continuous thing that we just want everything and I think you saw it last year in the in the NCAA tournament um, we're not there yet we're not there and we've made strides for sure but I think it's something that's definitely a, a continued work in progress for inside Michigan basketball I'm Anthony Palladano Thanks, Anthony. The women picked up a pair of wins this week, improving to 14-2 on the season. That ties the 2012-2013 club for the best 16-game start in program history. Sunday, Michigan used a 17-2 first quarter surge to run away from Rutgers 76-47, their largest margin of victory ever against the Scarlet Knights. Nas Hillman and Leah Brown shared scoring honors with 19 apiece. Maddie Nolan, whose mother is the all-time leading scorer at New Mexico State, so you know scoring kind of runs in the family, was a perfect 4-for-4 four four from deep and notched 14 points. Thursday at Penn State, the Wolverines connected on 10 of 14 shots in the first and rolled again, 74-57. to Four players hit double digits, led by Hillman with 21. Brown and Nolan each drilled three threes, finishing with 17 and 15 respectively. The Wolverines have a huge game later today at 5 o'clock against Big Ten preseason favorite Maryland. We're back with more after a quick break. Our time machine revs up and takes us back to January 18, 2014. The Wolverines won at number three Wisconsin 77-70, their first win in Madison in 15 years. Nick Stauskas led the way with a team-high 23. Karis Levert popped in 20. Michigan went on to win the Big Ten regular season crown, earn a two seed in the NCAA tourney, and made it all the way to the Elite Eight before falling to eventual national runner-up Kentucky. Welcome back, everyone. It was a big week for Michigan hockey. Current Wolverines, Maddie Beneers and Brendan Brisson were picked for the USA Olympic hockey team. But of immediate concern was a weekend series against Penn State. Friday, the Wolverines got off to a fast and furious start. 5.47 in, Luke Hughes leaks in behind the defense, and the freshman lights the juice lamp, number eight on the season. It's one zip. Late in the frame, Michigan goes on a five-minute power play. It took Maddie Beneers just seven seconds to cash in. That's number 13 for Maddie. It's two to nothing. Same power play, Beneers to Brendan Brisson to Kent Johnson, who shovels in his own rebound. That's his sixth. It was 3-0 after one. Eric Portillo made 28 saves between the pipes. It got interesting, but the Wolverines hold on to win by a final score of 3-2. Saturday, Michigan and Penn State wrapping up their four-game regular season series. Second period, no score, but that changes in a hurry. A two-on-none, shorthanded breakaway, Nolan Moyle with his fourth of the season, the team's fourth shorty overall. 
but the Nittany Lions shout back with three straight. Tyler Gratton from the left side. He beats Portillo glove side. It's three to one PSU. Watch this sequence of events. Penn State with a breakaway could make it four to one, but Portillo makes a huge stop for Michigan, one of a career high 44 on the night. And then moments later at the other end, just after a power play expires, Hugh's shot is redirected by Beneers, his 14th of the season. It comes with a buck 15 left in the frame, three to two after 40 minutes. 59 seconds into the third, Michigan gets the equalizer. Hughes goes hard to the net, and Beneers finds him with a swift pass. His second of the weekend, ninth overall, were all square at three. The eventual game winner came at 8.09 from the team's top goal scorer. Brendan Brisson registers his 15th of the campaign. That's third best in the country. Michigan gets the weekend sweep and the season sweep with a 4-3 victory. This week, a big road series for the Maize and Blue. They head to Minneapolis to take on the Gophers, the preseason number one and number two teams in the Big Ten. This week's Elro Steel Man of the Week is former football standout Mark Messner. As dominant a player who has ever worn the winged helmet, last week, Messner was selected to the College Football Hall of Fame in Atlanta, Georgia. He's the 33rd player from Michigan selected for induction. And Mark Messner joins us remotely from his home in Palmetto, Florida. Mark, College Football Hall of Fame. When you first get that news, what kind of races through your head? What are the emotions? Uh, disbelief and who's playing a joke on me? Uh, can this possibly be really happening? Talk about joining an illustrious group of, of men who've made their mark in this game at that level. For a guy that, that was never big enough, fast enough, or strong enough, um, it's, it's an unbelievable thing. I, I can't believe that I'm going to be rubbing elbows with the guys that are, went into this class with me, the names that I admired playing with or watching um, before and after, that, that I'm in that group is, is um, incomprehensible to me. I think there's something people need to know. You're one of two position players in Big Ten history, Steve Hutchinson being the other one, to be first team all Big Ten all four years. Could you have dreamt of something like that when you first enrolled here? No, absolutely not. And, and um, getting playing time, I had a hard time wrapping my head around because Michigan at the time, you know, had all Americans two and three deep. And, uh, you know, they started my, my redshirt year. I was an outside linebacker behind Jim Scarcelli. And it wasn't until spring ball and Kevin Brooks graduating that said, hey, you know, we need somebody here. And we think Mark can do it because of what he's been doing in practice in spring ball. So it wasn't, you know, spring ball, it threw me down into that role. And, you know, then the season starts up and I, and I start on all fours again. Because in high school, I was a middle guard and a tight end. You still hold the school record for tackles for loss with 70 and sacks with 36. Humbleness aside, do you think those records can ever be broken? Honestly, I don't think so because today guys don't play. If they start as a freshman and they have success freshman, sophomore year, they're jumping junior year to the NFL. You played on two Big Ten championship teams. I'm curious about your enjoyment level watching the 2021 Wolverines win the Big Ten championship and watching from afar, uh, what did you think of this group? I saw for the first time in decades what we had as a special team atmosphere. When, when all of those big plays were happening offensively and defensively, you saw those Wolverines turning to their teammates to celebrate. Nobody was turning really to the crowd and running from their teammates to look at the eye and look at what I did. This team turned and celebrated with each other. And that's what we did. And that's what made us a great, um, a great program. And I saw that this year with genuine enthusiastic responses for their teammates success. And I, and I just think that's what made it special. It's great to see those proud alums explode with excitement about the success of the 2021 Wolverines. The Michigan basketball team with two games on the schedule this week, home Tuesday against Maryland, and then Sunday at Indiana. 
Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time right here on Inside Michigan Basketball. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you in part by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest.